start our wonderful, wonderful webinar. Welcome, everybody. We're live right now. We are with Tristan and Andrew, and I love it. This is going to be so educational, so fun. Um, we've got a lot of attendees attending from Tacoma, Washington. Welcome, welcome. Uh, keep it going. Tell us the city and state you're from. Hello, everybody. Um, anyway, Tristan, take it away. <laughs> oh, no, thanks. I'm done thanks with my introduction. I love it. Great. Great <laughs> thank you, have. Have. Well, I'm so excited. I really am excited to get to learn more about Chime and, you know, get an education hat on. That's what LCA is all about, right? At the end of yeah, the day, we want to learn and grow yeah. from each other. And today we'll be debunking the myth of the all-in-one. I know that we go back and forth. We're like, well, simple CRM, all-in-one. What does this look like? Lead conversion, IDX website, wow. all that good stuff. And if you're just jumping in, know that this is recorded. So if you miss any part, you have to leave early. You jump in late. It's going to be on our YouTube channel, and that's on Lab Code Agents YouTube. So. Andrew, you work for Chime. What is your job, their official job title? Um, well, I am an account executive at Chime. So basically, my role is to give people an introduction to Chime and what the capabilities are. And if they like it, I help them get registered. And then we've got an amazing onboarding team that, and, and support team that takes care of everyone from that point on. I love it. And if they don't like it, who do you send them to? Uh, to you. I say, hey, talk to Tristan. Uh, he, he can do a better job than I just did. You're, you're quick. I like, I like, I don't stump. I like, how I don't stump you, Andrew. I love that. <laughs> he had that rolling right off, right? You already knew the answer. You already knew it. <laughs> uh, all right. So Andrew, let's talk about the all in one because it's, it actually comes up quite often. I get messaged often yet yeah, probably two to three times a day asking me, where they, where they should go. Should they do this? Should they do that? And so I don't think it's as clear cut as, as we'd like to think it is because right. agents are at different levels and, and sometimes some things benefit them more than others, right? Yeah. So I always ask, well, where are you at? Um, are you just starting off? Do you already have a website? Do you not? Tell me all that good stuff. And are you looking to also lead generate online? Or are you also going to use this only for past clients and sphere, right? And so when we break down something like Chime, which is an all-in-one, it's probably the closest thing to an all-in-one you're going to get. And that thing that sets it apart from everything else, because everybody's got an IDX site, the website, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody's got the CRM thing together. It does work with companies like Wilopo, which we all work with. Mm -hmm. And it's got the transaction management side of it a little bit, or at least it connects with like a broker. Does it connect with Skyslope, right? Yes. yes. Perfect. Yep. But the thing that sets it apart is the AI. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's really what takes it to the next level because you, you take a look at other all-in-ones and they're lacking that. They have, they have automation, right? Yeah. And, and they have what's called smart plans, which, I mean, Chime does too, but it's not artificial intelligence. It's not machine learning, right? right. It's not using Google to, to be able to learn all the whole process that it has. And I don't remember if you guys are using TensorFlow or the other one. Um, and I always get confused. You remember which one it was, TensorFlow or Workflow? Well, you're using one of the Google ones. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it is it is Google powered. I just can't remember. I, I'd have to ask one of our smart. I'll find people. it in between. I have it in my notes. So, okay. so let's start with the lead generation part of this because I think when I'm talking to agents, and yesterday I was Instagramming uh, an agent out of San Jose, mm -hmm. and she's like, "Well, should I should I do this or should I do that?" And after I got to all the questions, I'm like, "Well." it sounds like you probably need to go with Chime, right? Because it's the all-in-one that you're looking for. You've got the website, but more importantly, you want to do online leads, right? Absolutely. That's, that's the fuel. And you, yeah, and you know what What I love? I have to chime in right here, chime, chime in. Um, I have to say that I have used, um, I've used Chime for off and on, and then I came back to Chime and I was so mind blown with all the different features you have with the smart plans with the AI now that that is just like, wow, 
Um, and that is becoming more and more frequent, like uh, communication. People like to be communicated, not as much as through phone calls, as much as it is through text messages, Tristan. Have mm. you noticed that? A lot of people like being text, uh, like, you know, they're always on text and uh, they like receiving messages through Raya with Walopo or, you know, AI um, yeah. with Chime. Yeah. So I'd love to kind of d uh, d dig a little bit deeper into that too, Andrew, when we get a moment. Yeah. Well, and, and the interesting thing about that too is that, um, yeah, the, the tide has shifted in how people communicate, of course. And so we're just trying to iterate with that, right? We're, we've got so many cool tools built into the system, and we'll check a few out here, um, that utilize text, right? Because that's what people are responding to over a phone call. No one answers their phone anymore. I mean, right. my phone has rang like seven times in the past minute. That's, that's an exaggeration, but, um, <laughs> but we just don't answer the phone anymore. But if one of those people shoots me a text, well, sure, I'll respond back. I've got all my pre-canned texts. I've got a thumbs up I can send someone. Um, that's how people communicate. So um, instead of um, trying to hold on to the, the phone call thing that used to be the way to communicate, you know, it's, it, it, the, the tide is shifting there. We need to, to stick with that and be creative of how we use texting to communicate. I um, agree, man. I agree. Yeah. I, want, I want to share my site really quick. Yeah. Uh, this is, this is my, my Chime site. It's actually my favorite site that I've got. Uh, over all the other people that we, we have as websites. Yeah, picture's awesome. Obviously, I cover the beach, right? Right. <laughs> Malibu. Uh, but the important part about this is I want to talk about the Google PPC leads that, that you offer here because it can they can land on any part of, of whatever you create here, right? It could be specific homes. It could be specific home searches. Obviously, you see there it prompts it. And then I would fill it out, it asks specific questions as to where they're at in their home search. But let's say I wanna to go to Malibu and let's say I wanna pick a certain area where I wanna cover, right? I could have that as a landing spot. And one of the biggest mistakes that I see, John Key and Andrew, is when people are setting up their, their Google PPC or even their Facebook lead ads is that they generalize the area and they start with the most expensive or the least expensive mm -hmm. homes. Mm -hmm. And that's a mistake because most people aren't at each end. Most people are in the median, mm -hmm. right? And so it's important when you do these ads and, and uh, you guys do such a great job on that because I've talked to the back end system. I've talked to your people and and the people on the back end here are like, well, let's let's go in the middle. And instead, what's the median price range in Malibu? Now we have crazy prices here. So median price range is three to four million, mm -hmm. right? So that's what we're gonna be showcasing more of because now we're gonna be getting those people that are serious. They're gonna be finding homes that they like that are available. If I go here on, on the left, not very many people, and this isn't the highest price home, we have one you know what, now that I have you here, I'm gonna show you something cool. Um, as we zoom in here, you're gonna see this is Broad Beach, all right? And when you see the Broad Beach area, you're gonna see this one, which is 100 million. Okay, this is Pierce Brosnan's home. We did not list it, unfortunately, but we might list it after it expires, right? Which is good. Yes. So, yeah, absolutely. The home is absolutely insanely amazing, but could you imagine if I use that as the landing home for everything in Malibu? Right? It's not going to work. These people. And so this is why we always say start in the middle somewhere. This is this is the price range I would start with, right? The three and a half million in my area, right? So find the median and and do that. So. They do that really well. And that's that's why I start liking. I'm like, okay, you guys can do this all in one. I don't have to go get a site. I don't have to worry about getting a CRM. I don't have to worry about getting the lead generation part to this, right? Google, PPC. And you partner with people like Brian Short, who does a great job on uh, Google PPC, by the way. Yep. And you partner with Y Lopo, right? And you have other partners as well. And I, and I love that. And I was just about to say that too, Andrew, and Tristan, is that it is such an, you know, it's so integrational in every direction possible, even if that's a word, but 
<clears throat> I love the fact that you're so like you know, the system is so flexible in integrating with other other um, you know um, sources out there. Yeah. Well, and you know when 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 we talk to people and they're looking for an all in one. Mm -hmm. uh, in most cases, they don't know what, what that really means. Um, and so, you know, that's one thing I'd like to address is that, that an all-in-one, when someone's referring to an all-in-one, they're talking about a platform that includes an IDX website, a CRM, and lead generation. Now, there are so many tools out there. The, the industry is so fragmented. There's so many tools out there yeah. that help people with their business in, these, in niches, right? For, mm -hmm. Depending on what your needs are. So many cool tools. Now, Chime cannot possibly be the best platform out there for all of those little tools, right? Mm -hmm. We only have so much bandwidth and we, we wanna be the experts in the website CRM and on the lead generation side. But when you have, uh, when you have someone that is an expert in uh, with um, ISA lead nurturing you know, follow-up, right? We'll let them do that. We'll let them be experts in that. But what we've done and something that's unique to our platform is allow the ability to integrate those into our platform, mm -hmm. right? So the platform's play nice. We've got an open API, which is a big deal. Um, and so, so when someone's looking for an all-in-one, it's the website CRM lead generation. But then you need to ask those next questions with whatever platform you're looking at is what do you integrate with? What else can I utilize? Can I integrate my, my Gmail account, right? Mm -hmm. Can I integrate... Um, a ringless voicemail system? Can I integrate outside lead generation sources, right? Because uh, some people, they've got gr a great thing going with a certain lead generation source in their market. Well, mm -hmm. keep that going. Keep that going. Let's direct those into one central location where all of your leads are funneling. And to me, you know, Chime is a great all-in-one platform, but what makes it even better is the fact that we pull all the other platforms in to work nicely with it. And that's what I love. I was just, um, you know, I we, we've worked with Wilopo and we have Street Text, we have Wilopo, we have, um, you know, Sky Slope, we have um, Rhea, all of this integration with, you know, with, with just one platform, which is like, and then of course the CRM side of it and the smart plans. And it's so, it's not complicated, but it's so, so much just in one place, right. And yep. that is the beauty of it, right? You don't have to, like Tristan said before, you don't have to go to 10 different places. I really like that. Yeah. I love that. Andrew, is it okay if I share my screen once again? Of course. Okay, good. I wasn't sure if you were going to share something. I never know when you're going to pop in Baby I, Yoda, okay? I will I, eventually. I will eventually. But Tristan, your screen is so much better than mine. Oh, man. Oh, well, Tristan, dive into the opportunities when you get a moment, okay? Definitely. I and, love I want to show here, this is the, the dashboard. Obviously, this is the Chime webinar, so don't be surprised, right? We're pushing Chime. Uh, here <laughs> is uh, the section for the leads that I have, right? Here, here's the lead opportunities that we have, mm -hmm. right? And the thing that you have to look for is our, our leads that are coming in or our opportunities are coming in from two, two areas. Number one is Chime, and the other one is Wilopo. You can see right here, I'm going to zoom in. Yep. Wilopo, 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 Chime, Chime, right? And I primarily focus when it comes to Chime on Google Pay Per Click. So, right. Google AdWords, Google Pay Per Click, right? Mm -hmm. And so, the cool thing about it is, the Wilopo spend is separate, but they work with Chime directly so that we can get data. So let's go to Carolina. We can get data like this. And as I zoom in to the left, the tags are, well, this one's six to 12 months out, right? I'm on a timeline to move. They, they came back and it was a Wilopo ad word, right? Means it was Google, right? And then there they have a lead score. Now, if I go to if I go to a Chime one, let's go right to Wait, the hold on right there, Tristan. You said something, lead score, right? That's something that not a lot of CRMs have. And that actually shows you exactly where the lead is, uh, you know, how is it coming back over and over again, right? Yeah. And that's part of the that's part of the all in one because it has that data from the website visits, right? It has that data because it's working all together. And I'm gonna to go deeper on that one. This one's from Chime, it's a Chime paid Google, see? 
And it's a, it scored 72. Let me explain to you what that means here. When we click analysis, let me zoom out. This is what it's basing it off. See, here are the top indicators. It says, well, it's got a valid email, mm -hmm. a valid phone, house price. Well, that's good. I'm glad that the house price is 7 million. That's awesome. Uh, but not with an agent and active communication. It looks like we've already been communicating with them or at least responding in some way. There's a web activities, three searches, three viewed. And the communication, it looks like we're at one from the lead. And if I wanna go in further, let's take a look. It's Luis. Uh, by the way, Luis, and uh, let me see if I have it up here. Luis, my agent just closed this one. You That's see Matthew, Matthew Perry? Yeah. Right. He sold his 13 point million dollar home with my agent, Luis. Let me see if they, they showcase his name down here. That's awesome. Oh, I yeah, think that's... that was the one. But anyway, that was, that was Luis, right? So this is the Luis, right? He works with multi-million dollar homes. And so I go here and I can go all the way back. Uh, one of the things that we do that, remember this is the all in one, this is what I love. When we talk to our leads, online leads, the first thing we let them know is, hey, Andrew, this is Tristan on a recorded line. How are you doing today, right? So we've trained them to do that so that we can record it. And we yep. go up here, right? Here it is, recorded, right? And so that's important to us. And we can go through and check, well, let's see all of the activity. He's attempted to contact them. And it looks like the auto email came back and the AI assistant added a note too. So it was paused because Luis is very hands-on. So you see all that information is all here because it's working with the site. And this is one of my favorite parts, Junkie. Talk to me. Yes. Right? Yes. So the more they come back and the more they visit, the more they dwindle down their search, the more this becomes important. Absolutely. Because now this is telling me these are the ones that matched. And, and I'm now, like, okay, well, damn, yeah. it's doing my homework for me. Yeah. Well, let's say we've narrowed it down to a few. I can grab one from here, right? And I can start working on it and sending it to them. See, I can be like, oh, well, first of all, this is the agent, right? But here I can send it to them. It's like, I'm going to send this one over to the lead from here to my site. Mm -hmm. They're not leaving, right? And that's the whole all-in-one thing that I love. They don't have to go to different sites. They don't have to send you that listing. You're proactively sending it to them. So guess what? You're actually looking like you're doing what you're supposed to do as a realtor. Exactly. <laughs> so and, also, listing, you know? and also, Tristan, um, one other thing, if you go back to the list, the listing manager, if you would, where we just were. Right, um, let me go back to Kaylin so we can have the, the same icon. person. Yeah, or you can click on them. Yeah, that, that's perfect. So, so one thing to note is anytime a new listing comes in from the MLS, remember, you've got your MLS feed coming straight into the CRM. Uh, but if you go to that buyer matching, that column right there that says buyer matching, the system is also helping you see. So if you don't know what to do this morning, uh, go into the most recent listed properties and check out how many uh, people you have in your database that are a match for that property. Yeah. Right. So that, there's okay. your list of people to work right now because you know then and then if you click on that it's going to show you that list of people it'll show you how, what the matching factors are so right now with that current listing that just hit the market 52 minutes ago you've got a bunch of people that have close matching factors and you can go ahead and select that box to the left of their name and then now you've got an option if you want to send it to one person 15 people now you can email and text it to them and then customize your messaging. So now you just turn in, so even if they got a property alert, right? Cause we do have those built in. <laughs> even if they've been getting those property alerts, you've now positioned yourself as the proactive agent that is actually keeping an eye on these properties and saying, hey, customer, I just had a listing come across my desk. It just, that just hit that I think you're a good match for, right? So <laughs> now you are the proactive agent instead of just the one that's sitting back waiting for those property alerts to do the work and to present those properties in front of people. Right, and you know what What our what our ISAs do is they look at this first thing in the morning and this is the list they're calling. And these are the people who they set appointments up with me 
And then from there on, we, you know, can convert them, obviously get the ball rolling. But the whole point is that's where you get your buyer list or your seller list. So the buyer might have to sell, who knows? And there's so many different, you know, levels here. Yep. Yeah, that's a great point, guys. And when you when you when we take a look at new leads, let's say I'm here, I can go to the lead score and be like, well, show me all the ones that are at the top, right? Yep. And then I can check. Well, damn, I've got two of them there on the pond, right? right? If I'm if I'm my lead coordinator, by the way, Jake, Jake's listening on the back end. He's the one that sets everything. Hi, Jake. What's up, Jake? Uh, What's up, Jake? Dude, <laughs> this is this is how we should be like saying, hey, Tiffany, hey, Zach, hey, Zach's on the team, hey, Mark. You guys need to get on these. That's pretty high score. Mm -hmm. So definitely wow. something we can do, Jake, on that end. And let me shift over to go to this little um, little air, paper, paper airplane section. Okay. Because we do use Chime and we do use uh, YLOPO to, to gather leads from online leads, right? Google PPC, that's what we mainly do. And you can see here so far, last 30 days, this is our spend just in Chime, right? And our CPL, our cost per lead is $9. Mm -hmm. So if we want to take a look at the, the details here, I can go in and identify my cost per lead is pretty low in Malibu, right? This is the Malibu area. And our cost per lead is a little bit on the, not too bad, but on the higher side here uh, when it comes to Simi Valley, right? So then you can make some changes. You can call up the back end of a chime and be like, hey guys, can we tweak this? Can we maybe add a different city? Or can we spend a little bit more? But that gives you the back end system so that you're able to see what's happening on this end as well. Yep, absolutely. And and a lot of it, uh, I've, I've talked to plenty of people that, they, that they've been missing that type of uh, reporting for their lead generation campaigns, right? Yeah. They kind of say, hey, here's my money, do your thing. Well. If you're running a campaign with us, we're going to show you how many people saw that ad, how many people clicked on it, how many people registered, and what your close rate is on those ads. And so we're going to give you it refreshes every day so you can see right where your campaigns are at, how effective they're being. Okay, so something I just learned from Tristan and Andrew, and this is why I love these webinars, is I need to get Chime PPC. So we need to connect, Andrew. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> After good. this. Let's get you going. I mean, this is this is so awesome um, to where I'm actually learning so much. And look at this. I mean, look at the lead generation spent that is just done on the buy side and uh, CPL of it is only eight to nine dollars. I mean, yeah. how is that? And a lot of that is going to be dependent on your market, of course, right? right? Of course. Because uh, you know, in, in Malibu, your cost per lead is going to be a little bit different than it is in, in Salt Lake City, Utah, right? Yeah, very um, true. So, right. so, so that's going to be a big thing. But but the important part about that is understanding what, what that looks like for you right now. Mm -hmm. And then we can make uh, tweaks to those campaigns as we go. Um, but right now, seller leads, that that's what this country needs is more inventory, right? It's so, yeah. so short. Yeah. So, so you can say, hey, let's target a campaign specifically to seller leads. Um, and then what our team will do is they will target that market for you in your chosen zip codes, your chosen city, and put ads in front of people on Facebook. Says, hey, this is the current value of homes. Are you interested in knowing the value of yours? Or, you know, there's different messaging and, of course, strategies that we've vetted um, to put those ads in front of the right people at the right time. Um, but, you know, so, so running those seller lead generation campaigns are, are key right now. There's a lot of buyers out there that are chomping at the bit to, to just buy something. Mm -hmm. um, so it's the seller leads are, are gold. Um, but as you, uh, as you're working, um, as you're working your leads and considering your, your options, um, you know, it, lead generation is one, one part of the, of the puzzle. But then you go to your lead conversion, which Tristan has talked about with the, the AI assistant. Um, and we did, we did a webinar on this uh, very recently, all about the AI assistant. I invite people yeah. to Google that, check that out, because that's going to also be um, uh, very informative on how we do what we do. But then again, our, our ability to partner with outside vendors who do a really good job um, Verse.io, they do, um, they do um, run your ISA system for you, right? They've got a team that will take your Chime leads 
um, and, and, and nurture those with uh, real people calling and, and texting. So that's something that some people have found they absolutely love. So we partner with places like that because they are the expert with, with ISA services. Um, we out, we're, we're going to be partnering with others soon. Um, I, I've been told I'm not allowed to say who those are yet, but we will be saying that. Um, but uh, it's just going to get better because we've got all these talented and well-developed systems out there that we mm -hmm. want to play nice with. So then you've got all these tools right there in, in basically under one login. Wow. Is, oh, I love that. So there's a question here. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> does Chime allow texting to more than one person at a time? Sometimes we have two clients buying a, a, a similar home. Uh, we need to send a quick text to both of them. Can you uh, showcase that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you are, are working in your system, um, and you've got, uh, you've got two different people. You've, you can filter these leads down however you want. Um, but as you're working these leads, um, if you have a couple different people to send a text to, let's say- Wait, Andrew. Yes. I don't know if that first lead up there is a serious lead though. <laughs> it's so serious. I'm not sure about that one. Hey, and look at when he registered. Gee, what a looky Lou. I know. Well, and, and he, he has looked at thousands of properties and he still yeah, has and he's been years. looking since what 2017 oh my goodness <laughs> wow find him a good deal now um, oh, good to, deal. Answer, <laughs> to, to answer the question you've got um uh if you want to send a text to these four people here but you want it to be as an individual text to each recipient then you've got all sorts of fun variables you can plug in right Oh, that's so cool. Right? Then I can send that off and it's going to send it as an individual text to Javier, Josh, Sarah, and Eric. Okay? And then that text that goes out, if anybody responds to it, all of those messages are going to be saved under the lead record that it belongs to and you've got separate conversations going with each of those people if they respond. I hope that answered the question. Tristan, you're muted. There. That did. Uh, it did answer the question and I also wanted to use that to shift over, if you can show us the AI setup, because I think it's important. I want to I want to showcase uh, the profile section on the AI to show people that you can change the name, you can use a profile picture, and then you can set up. There's three sections for it, right? When they pop in, whether it's on the chat, a new lead, or wherever you want them to pop into. Can you showcase that, please? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I, I just switched my AI assistant's name to, to Tristan just because it sounded like a good name to use today. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so, you know, part of the, the challenge with AI is, is making it sound as human as possible. And so would an assistant be reaching out to someone at 3 o'clock in the morning? No. So if, the, if someone gets a response back at 3 o'clock in the morning, there's no hiding that that's an AI assistant. So yeah. if you want to, you can plug in your active hours for the AI assistant. You can, you can choose to delay the response back when you want to, right? Mm -hmm. So instead of that customer getting an immediate, well-thought-out response within one second, right, that comes across mm -hmm. as disingenuous. Let's give it 35 seconds or 20 seconds for yeah. the response to go out. Um, but what, what I love about this is you've got your AI that's enabled for your website. So as people are on your website, they're engaging with that AI bot. Mm -hmm. now, now, what we do is we take it a step further and say, you can go ahead and plug in the criteria or choose the criteria of leads in your database that you want that AI bot to go after. Mm -hmm. And so anytime there's a lead that fits this specific criteria, they're in my attempted contact, they're my buyer leads, you can choose what that is, and that AI bot is going to go after those people via text message um, to attempt to engage them or solicit a response back. Yeah. That goal of that AI bot is to qualify those people in or out and get them scheduled on an appointment um, with the agent. Um, and so you can go in here and, and change up these settings. And uh, we actually, um, we, we just had a, a meeting this morning um, we do have a couple more updates to uh, to what you can do with these AI bot settings and how it reacts and responds to people. Um, so it's exciting stuff that's coming, but uh, but we're depending on that that 
intelligence, but you can set up some parameters on when you want that tele intelligence to be released. I like that, man. I like that a lot. I wanted to um, show something really quick here. Uh, I'm going to, is it okay if I take control of the screen really quick? Yeah, go for it. Okay, cool. Uh, I want to show the ability for, hold on, let me grab, there it is, perfect. Uh, the ability to be able to to change the AIs, all right? So here, here we go. Um, here's, here's my AI assistant. I named him Grogu, right? And every time you see the AI, it's going to have his little face on it. So look, here's my site. Here's Grogu, right? So now every time I type there, there's little Grogu, right? Now, I don't know the legalities of it, but I sure think it's hella funny and I like it. So you can you can do whatever you want here. You can have some fun with it. You can even put uh, like one of our friends, Adam Frank. I think you know Adam Andrew, right? Yes. Yeah. He, um, he he his name's Adam, and he named his assistant Eve, right? Yes. And I thought that was brilliant. And the idea behind this is to, for us at least, is to let people know that it's not us. Right, it's an assistant. And whether or not you wanna let them know it's a real or fake assistant, that's up to you. But I'm choosing to have some fun with this, man, and that's what I want to show you. Yes, no, I love that, I love that. And, uh, and yeah, you do want to position that AI bot as an assistant. Don't try and make it sound like it's you that's engaging with them. Uh, there's two reasons for that. One is because if that AI bot, uh, you know, depending on what they say back and forth, now it's continually learning, but it may not sound like you, right? It may not sound like you. Um, and so you say, hey, I am, I, I am Jonky's assistant, Andrew, you know, and the AI bot is positioned that way. The, the phone number that, that, that they get texted on from the AI bot is going to be different than your number. That's on purpose. Um, and, then, and then, you know, you, you want it to, it comes across is more genuine if they are positioned as an assistant. Because I've, I've talked to people that say, well, I want them to think it's me they're talking to. No. So you know what, you have that option. You can break into that conversation at any time. Exactly. In fact, exactly. I'm gonna show you, uh, I'm gonna show you what I mean by that. So as that, uh, that AI bot is having conversations with, uh, is having conversations with customers on your site um, or via text, look at this, you can, you can watch those conversations and if you ever want to break in and type a message, then you are taking over and saying, "Hey, you've been you just uh, we're talking with my assistant. I wanted to jump in here. It looks like you know you're looking for this, or it looks like you're <laughs> looking for that." Okay, so now Andrew, <laughs> I'm just laughing because I can already think, see how people are like, "Hi, is Grogu?" There? I was talking to Grogu, your assistant. <laughs> I was just about to say that, Tristan. I mean, how funny would it be to say, hi, Grogu, wait, I need Grogu. Who the fuck are you? That's just, sorry. Sorry, Andrew. I couldn't hold yeah. it back, man. I couldn't hold it back. You're good. No, because Grogu is your assistant, and that's okay. You know, that's what we want. We want the customer to know, hey, this is not Tristan that you're talking with. This is an assistant. If you want to talk to Tristan, let me get him over to you, because that AI bot, its main goal is to get that person to commit to a time to talk to you as an agent. Okay? Exactly, exactly. So, I mean, uh, you, like you said, you can pick up any time in the conversation and start talking. Um, depending on what the conversation with Grogu is, you can always chime in and say, hey, this is Tristan, or this is you know Andrew, whoever. Um, yes. I'd love to go. And you just take over from there. There's so many different uh, ways to play around with it. But I love, I love the-, the Andrew. Sure. I know what you're going to do now. You're going to change yours to Tony Stark. <laughs> I just know it. How did you know? We have taken this uh, COVID-19 opportunity to watch from beginning to end all of the Marvel series with our kids. And it has been amazing. That is awesome. Every Friday night. Every Friday night. That's what we do. It's so fun. <laughs> I love it, dude. So, yes, Tony Stark. That's a good one. I have a question here on this uh, from Thomas. Yeah. First of all, Sarah thought that was great. Uh, thanks, Sarah. Thanks for uh, thanks for putting up with our, our uh, funny set here. Uh, Thomas says, when sending a group text, does Chime let the user know that a response was received? 
Absolutely. Yeah. So something about Chime uh, that, that people absolutely love is the mobile capabilities, right? We've got a mobile app that you can download straight to your phone. So a native mobile app. Um, now, the thing that, that is so important with that mobile app is the fact that you can get push notifications. Okay? So you've downloaded apps, I'm sure, for whatever, right? You download an app for the Nike store. Anytime you're close to the Nike store, you get a notification, right, about a sale that they've got going on. The Chime app, when someone responds to a text, you'll get notified of that. If someone, let's say someone just uh, returned back to your site after they've been gone for six months, you'll get notified about that. Um, someone just viewed one listing three or more times in a short amount of time. We want you to know about those things so they don't go unnoticed, but it's all about that mobile app capability and the push notifications. So to answer your question in a really long way, um, you will get those, uh, you'll get notified immediately when you get a response to the text. Wow. Well, we use most of these features. The only features obviously we don't have right now. I think we do have an AI. Yes, we do have AI. Um, but I love the feature where, you know, once the conversation is done with the AI, um, you get to know where the, where the true status of your lead is at that point, right? What are they thinking? And, and then you can cater, cater any which way to them. Um, yeah. And also love the opportunities, Tristan, right? The opportunities that we have. We know exactly who goes back into your site. And those are the people that you want to reach out to first thing in the morning. That's exactly what I tell my ISAs. That these are the people that you need to reach out to today and immediately as soon as you start your shift. So that, what else do we have here, Tristan? Well, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't completely finished on the AI side because I think that's what brings it all together. Yeah. I, I wanted you to, Andrew, if you could show the AI settings where you can go to the active hours, enabling them for the chat, yep. for the new lead, and then specifically for some agents on the team and not for the others. I love that. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so that's all going to be part of the, uh, the agent agent permissions, right? And uh, and which agents are included with this? Because keep in mind, you each agent has their own subdomain. Right. So um, if you've got if you've got a small team, you've got your main uh, team site, all the subdomains as well um, that each agent gets that will also have the AI bot uh, enabled for those subdomains. So each agent can go on and control their own settings for their subdomain. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. I love that. And Jake, who's listening in the background, Jake, I turned on uh, Grogu from 10 p.m. to 7 a.m for all online leads, okay? Nice. Just, just so you know, you may want to monitor that just in case I get yelled at by one of our team members, okay? <laughs> <laughs> well, that sounds good. All right. Yeah, I mean, all the way down to like the active days, right? So, so again, this is about you giving it some thought um, of when you want the AI bot to be engaging with people. Um, you know, so, you're, so, so you're playing it as professional as possible and not annoying people at um, four o'clock in the morning on a Sunday morning, right? That's, it's important to give that some thought. Yeah, true. I mean, if they're going to respond to leads coming through in the middle of the night though, right? That's, that's probably good if somebody's on, like Andrew, if you're on in the middle of the night and you're going to check out something and we text you back, then good, we got you, right? Absolutely. Well, and, uh, you know, aside from that, we're, we're in addition to the AI settings, right? When someone has engaged with the AI bot, depending on how they've responded to certain things, our system is going to know which smart plan to go ahead and enable from that point on, right? So the two, there's two facets. There's the AI and then there's the automation. Okay. So the, the automation side is, is your um, predetermined set of follow-up efforts, right? A cadence of how, when you're going to text them, um, the, your emails, reminders for yourself to call. That's all going to be on the automation side that kind of picks up the, the, the AI bot hands off to the, to the automation. So that automation, there's so many smart plans built into the system. Most, a, a lot of them are triggered from what happened with the AI bot, right? So yep. depending on how that person responded, then in our library, uh, in the smart plan library, I'll show you here. Uh, we've got several plans. Look, buyer no response AI, Ooh. right? That AI right there. Those are smart plans that are specific to someone who did or answered, you know, did something or answered a question in a certain way to the AI bot. 
So now the system knows, all right, let's go ahead and trigger this smart plan. So the yeah. smart plan is all the automation that might go on. Th this one right here, this is a 116 day smart plan that's got 14 mm -hmm. steps got enabled. It. Right, so these are all question. automated triggers. So Andrew, yes. as we're showcasing all of this, uh, I'm sure a lot of people are like, damn, that's a lot of stuff. Um, and Carol says, who can help me set ch my Chime account up? It has so many great features. I just need to make sure I set it up properly. And Tristan, we've not even touched the iceberg yet, by the way. Just want to I know. See. Yeah. Which makes <laughs> me think, Andrew, should I just start a VA company that does this all day? Yes. yes I think absolutely. that's a great idea. Tristan, you and I. Let's don't forget me. We're part hey, of don't forget me. I want to. <laughs> Andrew, you're in. Yes. I'm not Jackie, in. You're in. No, I'm, I, was, I was assuming you were in, Jackie. Come on. Come on. <laughs> me first. Yeah. So. Yeah, the, here's the thing, and, and this is something that um, can be overwhelming with these systems, is the fact that there are so many features, you kind of say, okay, well, where do I even start? Something that we've done with China is we've been very, very thoughtful about, or intentional about what we have built out for you, ready to go right out of the box, right? So if you don't want to invest a whole lot of time into your system, that's okay, because we've got stuff built in, ready to go, um, automated triggers that are ready to go. But then if you want to, you can go in and you can invest in as much time in it as you want to take it, to take it further, right? So these smart plans, for example, um, if I've got a really nice plan um, that, that I use, if I've got a nice plan that, that's in, in place, I can go on and if I want to, I can make changes to that plan. I can make it sound more like me, right? I like to say, thank you, I'm polite. Yeah. So yeah. I, could, I can go on and, uh, and, and edit and customize these plans however I want, add a step of an automated text in between a few emails, um, uh, specify exactly when I want this step to happen, whether it's 10 minutes after the last step, whether it's two days, 20 days, mm -hmm. at 9 or 4 a.m. And this is a okay. feature that I love so much because these smart plans really, really you can maneuver them any which way you want, especially coming from your systems and whatever you have out there, the, the scripts that you've used and you can plug it in right here. The, you know, these are the smart plans that you can actually edit um, and make it your own. Great, very point. Um, but if you don't want to, then you're still good, right? You still got a, a really nice system, but you know, it, it's always wise to go in and, and see what you are sending people um, and make those changes so it sounds like you. So two questions. One on this one. Um, Thomas says, in your smart plans, can you set an event to a specific date? That's the first question. Okay. Well, how about we just show everyone that? Oh, even easier. Show me that one. Right there. It's right so there. This is this right here. Now, now keep in mind, there's, there's several different triggering things that can start a smart plan that can be behaviors on your website. Maybe if you just added a tag to a lead, right? Uh, full disclosure, I'm a Seahawks fan. I grew up in Seattle. If I were an agent up there, if, yeah. If I were an agent up there, I would have a tag of Seahawks and I would have a smart plan that talks about how much I love Seahawks and real estate. So anytime I add a tag to a lead, that says Seahawks, I know that customer is going to get the, that smart plan from me. So you've got a lot of automated triggers, but also uh, the triggering dates and events. Uh, Christmas, those, we've got those built in for you, a specific date. At uh, the close date on the property is a popular one. Mm -hmm. uh, those are all things that are going to help automatically start those plans based on data points in the lead record. The best way to look at that is for birthday, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Smart plan for a customer maybe a customer and that customer's spouse, right? Mm -hmm. Well, what's gonna happen is each year on that customer's birthday and the spouse's birthday, they're gonna get an email from you that says, happy birthday, right? The, so on that, on that note, can a, can a husband and wife contact inside of Chime, can they receive separate texts to each other? Yeah, yeah, yep. And all of those will be saved as part of the activity history of that particular, because you know, you've often got a lead record and a spouse associated with that lead record, right? So instead of having those two separate, we can merge those into one and then all your communications, whether it's with the, with the wife, the husband, um, all those communications are gonna be logged 
as par part of the timeline of activities for that specific week. Could, could it also, would you have to put the, put the, obviously the phone numbers in that one profile, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, within, that, within that individual lead record, you'll be able to see what those relationships are. Um, so you got family members. You can have multiple family members, parents, kids, whoever. Um, plug in, if you want to plug in their information here, then that's going to all be part of um, you know, what, you, what you're able to do with communications. So for, uh, for my son here, I've got his birthday in there. Um, I could start a smart plan, a, a birthday smart plan for their kids as well. So then they get those emails um, you know, on their birthdays. So those are all options that, that make it nice for you to automate a lot of that follow-up process that otherwise would be very tedious. I love that, man. I'm just texting and responding back to a couple of different people here on, on Facebook. There was another one. First of all, Leon says, go Hawks. Yay. No. Leon was the one from Tacoma, yeah. right? <laughs> yes. You need Tacoma? Tacoma? Yeah. Hey, Puyallup. Leon, Puyallup. That's where I grew up, born and raised. Family still lives there. Wow. I love it. Uh, and Kelly says, when emails sent it now, do they go as a single email uh, when you select all family members or are there, are they still individual emails? Uh, so it depends on the nature of the email. So for like property alerts, okay. Um, the property alerts, these are automated. So if someone just simply visits your website and they look at a property, they will be suddenly set up on, they will be automatically set up on a property alert that fits that search criteria. Okay. Mm -hmm. Those you can include all, all family members on that you can you can make adjustments to uh to who is getting those um if you're sending one-off emails then um you can include whoever you want so for this particular property alert here you can see who i'm including with that alert right yeah. um now the smart plans with the with those drips that's going to go to the primary owner of that lead record so that's one caveat to remember um, we're not going to be um, dripping on both. It's just going to be the primary account owner. So may I just make a quick announcement, guys? Um, if any of our uh, you know, um, attendees here uh, needs to go, um, not a problem. This is being recorded. YouTube channel, please subscribe. Lap Code Agents. Just wanted to let everyone know that not to worry. We're, this is recorded. So if you miss it, you can come back anytime. Um, Lap Code Agents. Uh, <laughs> And you know, yeah. on that note, Junkie, there, there are some people out there that are trying to transition off of um, Zillow and Realtor.com, especially with what Zillow pulled a few weeks ago, where yep. they're removing the, the past sales from Thanks. some people's profiles, right? Mm -hmm. And so uh, I think one opportunity that people have is the ability to get Google PPC and go in exactly. deeper on Google, right? Exactly, exactly. And so that's what um, I'm looking forward to too. That's why I love it. I mean, we've been all in on Google since 2016, all in. Before mm -hmm. that, 2009 is when we started doing PPC, uh, which is pay-per-click. And uh, I'm going to throw a video in there really quick if you guys want to watch how to shift out of Zillow. And there's one other thing that Kelly wanted to add for you, Andrew. By the way, one of the best things about Chime is that you guys are super receptive to improvements and you implement quickly. So. Well, and, and I'll tell you, like I said, uh, this morning we had a product update training, which uh, we, we have one of those at least once a month um, because they want us to be trained on these updates before they're actually released, right? Um, there are some really exciting things. Um, a, a little sneak peek for, for, for one of them is within your smart plans. Um, being, there's, we're adding a lot of, of, um, of options for what the next step is going to trigger, right? So within a smart mm -hmm. plan, you've got emails, texts, but now you can trigger, um, but now you'll be able to trigger uh, things like property alerts to happen at a specific time. Or, or if you want this lead to be transitioned into a new pipeline at this stage of the smart plan, Anyway, really cool things that, um, that I think people will be excited about. I'm excited about it, but I geek out on real estate CRMs. So yeah, I, I need to get a life. I love that. 
Well, and, but, and, it is, it, but it does make a difference uh, for, for your business. And that's, that's why it's exciting. Andrew, to, to top it all off and end it, can we answer Sarah's question here? And that's, yes. can we see the metrics on agent performance measures and tracking on the back end? Very good question, Sarah. Of course, of course. Good way to end so, it. So, uh, yeah, so um, what uh, what you're able to see, and, and this is gonna be more centered, a lot of it depends on the total team members you have, right? If you've got a team, if you're a single agent, um, these are gonna perform a little bit differently. Um, but yes, you'll be able to see all the effort metrics for your, for your agents, calls, texts, emails, um, response time is a big one, right? We've got lead routing built into the system, um, automated round robin, uh, blast alerts, several different cool options. But if you wanna see, see what the average response time is for your agents you and see right here um, what, what those response times are. So really good insight uh, for the individual agent reporting. Um, and, and I hope that uh, that answered your question. There's several other reports that you can run and filters you can set just to see what you've accomplished in the past as you're planning for the future. Um, but this one specifically is all about uh, that agent accountability and knowing who's performing and who's not. I love it. I think that I that it. does it. If you missed any of this, it's recorded. Junkie, thanks for being with us. She was my co-host today. She's oh. out of what area do you cover? Just Fremont, Bay Area. Let's go. San Jose, Silicon Valley. That's where I'm at. <laughs> nice. And Andrew works with Chime. He was employee number one. Actually, I don't know, Andrew. Are you? <laughs> So, so uh, there's only one person that's been at Chime longer than I have, and that's our CEO. Oh, wow. That's what I thought. See, that's what I thought. Yeah, I was, I was part of the initial hire group. Um, and so I don't know who was actually hired first, but we all started on the same day. So I'll, I'll say that, you know, you, you can give me whatever number you want. But, uh, but yeah, the longest standing one, I guess, at this point. Sounds like you're number one, bro. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Andrew, for doing such a phenomenal job. I mean, Chime is just integrating so many things, and I love it. Um, every single time I look at Chime, there's something new going on, and I love that platform. So thank you. Thank you for presenting yeah. uh, to our audience out here. Andrew's yeah, number one. You need, you need a shirt that says number one, Chime number one. <laughs> well, I've, I've got a statue in the back. You can't really see it, but it says uh, world's best or world's greatest dad. So oh, I'll take that. That might count. Yeah. Okay. I'll take it. Uh, oh. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, Jackie. Uh, Thank you, you everybody else. Do you want to see Baby Yoda? Let's take Baby a look Yoda at Baby Yoda. Oh, what is Baby Yoda? <laughs> Baby Yoda says. Baby Yoda signing off. Yeah. So cute. See you later. See you guys. Bye.